So when I um, worked for Teva, it was my, my life previous to NCH, I was in an advocacy role. And so we, um, my, one of the organizations that was assigned to me was Aon. And so um, I just literally attended my first conference. Um, and uh, I, I was really um, floored because I, I knew navigators existed, but I had no idea that they had come together and coordinated and, you know, et cetera. And um, I have a background in post-acute transitional care. So I founded a company called Global Transitional Care. Um, and so I ran that for a few years and then we got acquired. So I'm still on the board with them, but it's definitely relate. It was very relatable to me because of my background, right? So we dealt with transitional care, hospital to home, and about 50% of our patient base had an oncolytic um, diagnosis in addition to others, right? So um, I, I was very familiar with the impact of what the navigators were trying to do in the patient journey. Um, and so I, I remember they were asking for volunteers for the metrics committee. And I was like, I want to get more involved in this organization. Like, you know, Teva aside, like it was something that the topic was something I was super passionate about because of my history. And so I just told her, I mean, and, and the thing is, is that we were considered industry. I was considered industry. So there's always kind of a bit of a firewall there. But um, I talked to Trisha about it and I said, hey, listen, I know that I'm industry, but, um, you know, I have a background in, in this and we talked about it. And she goes, come, we'd love to have you there. Um, super gracious. And so I attended, I remember attending my first meeting and just exactly what they were talking about is having a set of metrics. Like that's exactly what we did at, you know, at GTC. And so it just kind of spiraled from there. Um, and then I ended up having a conversation with Trisha about acuity and caseloads. Um, cause that was a big issue at GTC as well as how many nurses take on how many cases. And so I asked her if she had any thoughts around that. And, um, so we started talking and she says, Oh, you need to go join the acuity committee. And so that's how I got roped into that. And then, um, I switched gears and I went to NCH and I started diving into the OCM model a lot deeper, APM models a lot deeper. And, um, I started giving presentations on it. And uh, Danelle, I'd known Danelle for a while too, obviously through Aon. And so she had attended one of, um, we were both at the same conference and I was presenting and she was presenting and she sat through my presentation and she's like, we need you on our leadership council. <laughs> I think you'd bring a really good, because I, I look at it from a payer perspective. I'm, I'm not looking at it from a practice perspective in, in its pure form. I'm looking at it from what could the providers do um, to align with the payers and what can the payers do to align with the providers and what needs to happen to make the models successful, you know, and I think payers have sometimes this um, grandiose idea of capabilities of providers in general and, pro and what they can and can't do. And it's completely off base and um, providers fear, like have the fear of God in them with payers. Like they're the big, bad, evil insurance companies. And, and they're not really, they're just trying to understand how to build something that's going to drive down their cost, but not sacrifice patient care. And so there's a lot of misnomers happening. And so I was talking about that. And so Danelle's like, we definitely want payer representation. This would be great. So um, that's how I kind of got roped into it. But, <laughs> but I also bring the pharma experience because I was in pharma for over 20 years. So um, that piece of it too um, is, is part of it, right? You can't ignore it. 